The story is about um, a professional guardian uh, called Marla, played by Rosamund Pike. Um, and the sort of the story came about because I'd heard news reports about real professional guardians in America, um, and I sort of went down a sort of a, sort of a Google tunnel, reading lots of news stories about about these uh, these people and what they did, and I was sort of kind of horrified <laughs> about what they were doing, even though mostly it was kind of legal. It was kind of like a legal loophole, and I thought that was sort of like an interesting territory that was. Um, similar to, like, had lots of themes in it that I was interested about, of like, kind of uh, humans being commodities and like ambition and like the American dream and things like that. So, uh, so the story started there and then kind of very quickly formed into what it is now uh, as I started writing it. And then so I just sat, sat and wrote it on my own and then uh, sent it to Teddy Schwartzman, um, who I'd sort of like come into contact with but never worked with before. And he read it and he liked it and wanted to make it and so we were on and so we were we were, went out to try and uh, find our Marla. The, the title of the film is I Care A Lot and that sort of reflects the fact that she works in the caring profession um, but the irony, the irony being that she doesn't seem to really care about the people in her care but she has a lot of people she cares for so she's got a sort of more quantitative care rather than qualitative care um, and uh, it just sort of, she, she does say it in the movie that she, she cares a lot and it's whether you believe her or not, you know, whether she really does. The tone of the film is, it's sort of a mixed bag. It's kind of a playful, but sort of like dark. There's a lot of people doing sort of things that ethically are a bit, um, you know, dubious. Uh, uh, so, you know, the tone sort of follows them around as they sort of enjoy being sort of amoral and so the tone is kind of an enjoyable one even though you don't really condone what they're what they're doing you should sort of have fun while they're doing these terrible things but afterwards feel a little bit sort of uh, uh, appalled at sort of the fact that you were enjoying it so much I think. Marla is a professional legal guardian and she's extremely ambitious and she's smart and determined and focused and charismatic um, and, you know, Rosamond was perfect to play her, well, A, because she's such a talented actor, <laughs> I've been a massive fan of her, of her work for a long time, uh, but she kind of has that very relatable charm and charisma, but, how, but you know, can give Mara an edge and give her a sort of like a, a playfulness that I thought was, you know, really, really interesting for the part. And uh, as soon as Rosamond read the script, she seemed to really get, get the character of Mara. And I think, you know, when you're, when somebody really gets the character and really excited to play them and they have come up with all these great ideas and great sort of questions about the character, you can tell that they're gonna they're gonna, you know, be great. And uh, and she was, you know, it's been Rosamond's been really great in the movie. Fran works with Marla in the the same company and she's more of sort of the behind the scenes of the company, so does a lot of the research, a lot of the sort of the shoe leather stuff. It's very capable and has sort of a history of working with the police. She used to be, she used to work for a bail bondsman, so she has sort of, um, kind of a lot of skills that are very useful for the business that they run. Uh, and she's uh, got a sort of very strong relationship with Marla. Um, Asa, Asa Gonzalez, who plays Fran, is uh, a really exciting actress because she can do all of it, really. She's, uh, she can play kind of emotional and vulnerable on one second, and then she can play sort of very strong and sort of feisty and fierce at the next minute um, without it sort of feeling like a total switch. She sort of uh, came very prepared and had lots of questions and, um, you know, really sort of dug into her character in a way which, you know, for me was fantastic. And her chemistry with uh, Rosamund on screen was, was great. Peter sort of has, you know, such a sort of great sort of wicked like kind of uh, look in his eye and you know can it's got great timing and it was you know real pleasure pleasure working with him um as for the character of Rukoff you know he he's sort of like the the criminal version of Marla what he does you know he's trying to be like, he's when we first meet him he seems to be um a, a, like a, a powerful wealthy man who has sort of connections to bad guys who can do bad things and the more we learn about him the more that we learn that he's not quite the run-of-the-mill uh, bad guy that you expect him to be and he has like you know a complicated relationship with his mother he like is trying to sort of 
keep in shape and things like that, um, and is sort of struggling with anger issues, uh, all of which Peter plays really well. And I, you know, I don't think he's. I mean, he is worse than Marla because he, he does things that are highly illegal and he kills people, uh, but which Marla doesn't do. But Marla's doing sort of ethically dubious things on the right side of the law, and he's doing ethically dubious things on the other side of the law. So I don't know if it means that she, you know, we, we root for Marla a little more, but I think it means that, you know, you can sort of see that they're, both these things sort of exist in sort of like, like a yin and yang kind of harmony with each other. And so they're kind of very well matched, uh, pitted against each other in the story. Jennifer Peterson, uh, when we first meet her, just seems to be kind of like a very kind of comfortable, borderline wealthy, well, pretty wealthy, older woman who's downsized, owns her own home, but has no family. She's just sort of getting on with a nice, comfortable retirement, which is why she seems like the perfect score for Marla, whose business is taking advantage of wealthy, older people. And especially as she has no family, she seems to be the perfect mark because there's no complications. Um, but the more we find out about Jennifer, the more we realise there's lots of hidden depths to her and a lot more complications than you know Marla or the viewer will hopefully hopefully see at first glance um and Diane you know Dan's well Dan's got two Oscars and this has been in like some of my favorite movies and it was uh, so exciting to get to work with her and she comes with obviously with a lot of you know experience and a lot of uh, great sort of acting instincts but she also has this like again a wicked sense of humor and she can turn from like a vulnerable Older ladies having the, you know, having, uh, she can go from being a, a vulnerable older woman who's have, being uh, taken advantage of and sort of turn into somebody who's a little bit less vulnerable and a bit more, uh, I don't know, threatening. So, you know, it was fun, really fun to watch Diane sort of do those changes. We got very lucky with our cast. We got really good ensemble cast, quite a deep bench of not just the main cast, but um, <clears throat> the, the supporting actors, including Scoot McNary, Chris Messina, Isaiah Whitlock Jr. Um, we have all sorts of people in there who I've been big fans of for a long time. And then every time they're in a movie, they, they make the movie better and they're really reliable. And they get to do something a little different from what they, they usually do. I don't know if I have a specific way that I work with actors, because directors never get to see other directors' work, really. So I just work with them the way that feels like instinctively natural to me, which is mostly talking to them. So Rosamund and I were talking for quite a long time before we started shooting the film, and we'd like watch movies together, and we'd talk about the character a lot, and kind of go into the character's past and do a lot of that sort of work. And I did a similar thing with Aza. We talked about the character's past and what they'd sort of been through and then sort of build a backstory for them, which then, by the time we get to shoot, then... They're not really thinking about that, but hopefully they've sort of absorbed it and they're sort of informing everything they do. But mostly it's just a conversation. You sort of, you hire really good actors, you sort of let them bring their ideas, you see what they can do, and then you just sort of tell them what you're thinking and, you know, hopefully if it all works, then you're all trying to make the same film. The director of photography was Doug Emmett, and this is the first time I'm working with Doug. Um, I really, really liked the film, uh, Sorry to Bother You, that he made with Boots Riley. And I really loved his sort of, uh, his, his framing and his use of colour. Uh, and with, with all the HODs, I mean, I had a very specific sort of look and colour palette in mind for the film. It's not quite a, a naturalistic world. It's a slightly heightened world. And so finding heads of department that were really enthusiastic about that and bringing lots and lots of ideas. So Doug, you know, we, we talked a lot about the references that I had and he, he was really excited about them. And like we, the kind of photography that we both like is very similar. So we sort of getting each other excited about the possibilities and sort of talking about the different cameras and stuff. And Doug's really shot this to be sort of punchy and colorful and dynamic and sort of reminiscent of uh, sort of films of like the 50s and 60s. Um, and, you know, having that really sort of like colorful, punchy look. Um, and I think it, you know, it looks very distinctive and you know, I think he did a great job. Costume designer was Deb Newell and uh, she, with Michael and Doug and uh, Deb, we all got uh, together at the beginning and talked about the colour palette because I had the very uh, sort of, I was determined to make this quite a colourful film because the films that I was thinking of as influenced by, influenced by like the 1960s films by Goddard and Technicolor films from the 50s, as well as like early 90s kind of films shot on film, they have this sort of this, this really sort of high contrast, punchy, colourful look. And rather than sort of suppress the colours, I really wanted to bring them out. So we sort of looked at lots of photos, all of us together, and sort of talking about who was going to take charge of colour in the scene. And we really worked out where the colour should go. And we all worked in 
collaboration with each other. Uh, and Deborah really rose to the occasion with, um, especially with Rosamond's wardrobe for Marla's character, that you know, we really have really big pops of colour in there of like bright yellow and bright red and teal, which really fits into the world that Michael Gracely built for the character. And so together, all three of them have like helped shape this sort of very specific look that you know, I was really pleased with. When an audience comes out of I Care A Lot, hopefully they've been on, a, on an enjoyable ride with this charismatic character who's a little bit despicable, but sort of enjoyably despicable. So they should come out feeling like they've had a, had a good time, but at the same time they should kind of feel like, well, should I have a good time watching what they're doing? Um, so I think it's, you know, it should be, a, it's a fun movie, but it should leave you with a little bit of grit in the oyster at the end that uh, kind of keeps you thinking about maybe the, the wide world.